Welcome to another edition of Community Talk. I'm one of your co-hosts, Bhagwan Singh. And I'm the other co-host, Martin Singh. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. Last week's uh, topic actually raised some uh, viewers, actually, especially in the UK and abroad, and even, even, uh, even here in Canada raised the issues about the US elections. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've always been growing up with a British parliamentary system. Uh, here in Canada, we follow the British parliamentary system mm -hmm. as well, obviously the UK. I have no clue how this primary system works um, in the US. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I look to you, but with mine, to shed some light on the matter. So for, for those of uh, our uh, you know, viewers out there in the internet land, uh, I can share with you that it, it is hugely complicated. Um, and it's complicated because the rules differ state by state, but then they also differ based on the party. Meaning this is that you can have one state uh, that's you know having its primary, and even today there are five that are going. Whereby, say for example, for the Democratic nomination, only Democrats can vote. The next state, just you know, an hour down the road, it'll be Democrats and Independents can vote, and then the next one it be, can be anybody can vote. So let's just take it right from both basics. The primary leads to what is a nomination of the sort of uh, elected. The presidential. That's that. That's exactly what it is. So, so the primary process, whether there are actually primaries or caucuses, because there's caucuses also. What happens is is that the person for both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party who come out of that um, with the you know the majority of required votes, uh, you know, 50 percent plus one essentially, um, becomes the nominee to travel on to the presidential election. And in truth. Um, you know, the presidential election, while it doesn't actually happen until November, really starts up immediately after, and so or immediately after the, the primaries are done. So what will happen is, is that you have a situation whereby, uh, you know, beginning of the year, uh, the primaries and the caucuses start. Uh, Iowa's always the first one, and they always go, generally speaking, in a very specific order. Um, and so Iowa gets looked at first, and then there's a couple uh, other states, uh, including South Carolina, and I believe it's New Hampshire. And then they have what they call Super Tuesday, which is when a whole number of states go and a bunch of delegates are selected. But to, if, if that wasn't complicated enough, Baji, it, it becomes even more complicated because in the Democratic Party, you have many, many what they call super delegates. The Republican Party has some of them too, but they are not, you know, very numerous. Uh, the Democratic Party has many, and it's one of the reasons why this year Hillary Clinton is so far ahead of Bernie Sanders, not because she has beaten him uh, in all that many states, um, but sh it's because she has, you know, the bulk of the superdelegates backing her. So, <clears throat> just looking at the candidates themselves, you have Donald Trump, um, uh, Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. um, John Kasich? Kasich, Kasich, yeah. Kasich, well, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. The former governor of uh, uh, Ohio, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. He's not doing so good. Um, yeah. And at the moment, you have Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a, uh, so you have three or four who are from obviously the Republican side, which would be the right wing, or according to our Conservative Party in both the UK and, and in, in Canada, thereabouts. And then you have Democratic. Party, which we equivalent to our Labour Party in the UK, and probably sort of NDP, New Democratic Party, and, and Liberal Party in Canada. So, but the houses, you have the House of Representatives, and and was in Congress. How does that, how does that work? It was in in the British parliamentary system, it's very easy. Whoever's the majority mm. elects their, um, you know, is, is the leader. They win the election. It's all done in one shot, and you have got four years. Just by and large, you're stuck with the same government. That's it. So you have the presidential election. We might talk more about the candidates here in a second. But to your question about how uh, you know, the, the two separate houses work there in the United States, basically some of the elections go this year and then some don't. And that's why after two years in the United States, you have what they call midterms, right? which is where the other crew you know, run and try to get elected, whether they're you know, in the Senate or, or you know, congressmen or women. Um, for the congressmen or women, you know, it's basically a, you know, a population-based thing, if I'm not mistaken, whereby the number of reps that they have per state you know, comes as a result of the number of people they have living within them. And then the Senate is you know, more equitably uh, you know, uh, represented, meaning they only have you know, two senators, if I'm not mistaken, for each of the separate states. So if you want a bill to pass, what does it have to do? Well, so so this, is, this is a complicated process, right? Because 
you know, you can, you can have bills that are sponsored by any number of different people. Um, the bills, you know, can, can come from, you know, the, the Senate can come from the help of representatives. But in addition to that, what happens is it can get all the way through and passed all the way through those items. And then, you know, the president can have a presidential veto, right, and, and, uh, and cast them down. And even that has its own conditions, meaning that, you know, if it's passed by a certain number of folks, then, then that can be, uh, you know, circumvented as well. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a challenging system, you know, from an outside perspective, you know, to, to work on. But, uh, I mean, from our community's perspective, you know, which is, you know, where our focus is, mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, you know what, what does it all mean to us, right? Um, first and foremost, you just don't see a whole lot of Sikhs participating, right? Which I think is, you know, so particularly so tragic. There's, uh, the, but there has been a history. There's the Deep Singh Sand who was elected in the early 60s, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember from history. But now, is there any, do you know of any Sikhs participating as uh, in the election process at all? Yeah, if, if they are there, then they're, then they're not folks of profile, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because the thing is this, when we speak, compare it to our own Canadian elections, yes, you know, we have the four cabinet ministers that we're talking about now, but, you know, Sikh people had presence, you know, in the Canadian election. Like, they're very, very visible, right? Whereas, you know, they're almost entirely invisible, you know, as at least speaking from, from an outsider's perspective uh, on the American uh, election. And, and, and that concerns me, right? Because it's not as though we don't have, you know, members of our community living there. And, you know, I'm sure from among them, they could find many great candidates that could, you know, get the support and get the funding that, you know, they would need in order to make a run. But... Uh, is that, do you think the problem is the funding? Because it's, I think they're hugely expensive elections. They, they are hugely expensive elections, but, you know, we have members of our community who have done very, very well there, right? So, I mean, I don't think money's the issue, right? I think that it's a very different political climate there. And I think that the climate is becoming less and less hospitable with, you know, each and every passing day and passing week. I mean, when you look at this particular run, as it were, um, it's, it's a very different run, particularly on the Republican side. If we harken back to the previous election where you had, you know, Mitt Romney and John McCain going at it, you know, say, say what you wish about, you know, the Republican Party, but at least you can say that, you know, the, the, those two gentlemen, you know, conducted themselves and conducted themselves professionally, right? What has happened in the interim is that, um, you know, the Republican Party has allowed itself to be, you know, hijacked, or at least the messaging be, been hijacked. So now what you get in effect are demagogues, you know, presenting themselves and being accepted as, you know, proper candidates. I mean, the one that receives the most press is, you know, Donald Trump. But to be quite frank, Ted Cruz is not a whole lot better from a minority perspective. Don't you think the mind has to boggle about some of his the building the wall then asking Mexico to pay it? Yeah, that's really going to happen. And then the fact is, how many 11 million people he wants to remove from the country? That is 3.5 percent of the population. Just pack up, you know. Just wants to pack up their bags tomorrow morning, and just go back to wherever. Yeah, <clears throat> and well, that doesn't bode well for our Sikh community either. No, no, not at all. And and the thing is, this is that the 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 the, the real tragedy is this. Like, I mean, I don't think those policies will ever come to pass. I, I don't think that it's even, even if the you know Donald Trump were to become president, I don't think it's manageable, right? You know. However, what it does though, when you have candidates that so openly speak in a manner that, you know, reinforces hate, right? What happens then is that people don't differentiate, you know, in, in terms of who they dis discriminate against. And so um, it's kind of the reverse of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, you know, theory. Uh, his, his theory was that, you know, if you ensure that the rights, you know, and the privileges of one group are protected, then the fact, you know, it has a, a broad effect of protecting the rights and privileges of all groups, right? Whether they be minority or majority. Um, the same is true is on the, uh, uh, you know, same is true on the reverse, right? Meaning that if you start to strip away rights and privileges from, you know, particular groups, then it impacts, you know, the, the broader population, whether they be minority or majority. And that's what we're seeing now, whereas, where, whereby the Muslim population is very specifically targeted by Donald Trump, the overwhelming proportion of the American population can't distinguish between Sikh people and Muslim people. So we're seeing hate crimes and whatnot start to rise up. You're seeing, um, even when it's not a hate crime, you're seeing, uh, you know, effectively members of the Sikh community being disenfranchised from the larger American community, meaning 
people don't talk to them, um, you know, think of them badly, prejudge them in, in negative ways. This is the real tragedy. This is the tragedy. When you have someone who's so high profile um, give voice to such a hateful message, then, you know, the, the nutters who would normally, you know, keep quiet, you know, feel that they have the license now to come out and, 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 and speak their hate as well. Yeah, and, and even when the far right, um, you know, the Ku Klux Klan, you sort of lends its support to Donald Trump, Donald Trump doesn't, he takes his time about, and if he does it properly, about you know, disassociating from that. And, and that, that, that's, a, that's a worry. Um, so I think the Sikh community, and I would love to hear actually from members of the Sikh community in the U United States, and please sure. uh, email and, and, and contact us via telephone, what they are feeling and what they're thinking was with Donald Trump as, 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 as president. And the Sikh community has done uh, very well. There's many doctors and many people in IT and all the professions in, 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 in the U US, but what, what is the Sikh community feeling about the, the idea of these people actually being elected in the parliament, and uh, not parliament I say, but uh, you know, elected as president of the United States. Um, but on the other hand, you have uh, Clinton and, and, and Bernie Sanders. Um, this is a really quite interesting election when you have, on one hand, Donald Trump, and on the other hand, Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think there's, there's some more of a wave that's going out throughout the world where you know, Bernie Sanders is declared socialist. You know uh, whether he really is or not. You know that's up for debate, but at least he's he's, say, he's saying that the word he is a socialist and he believes in in, in, in that in that philosophy. Um, but you know in the UK you have Jeremy Corbyn elected, and I actually want to you know sort of explore this where you have uh, UK Jeremy Corbyn, Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. but here in, in 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 Canada with Tom Mulcair now being effectively sidelined in his party, mm -hmm. Tom Mulcair being the um, uh, Leader of the left-wing uh, um, NDP party, who's more of a more of a Blairite tradition, uh, if loosely termed, and you know, I really look to you. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to use that term, but uh, <laughs> but I'll let you use it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, um, um, and what does it mean for Canada with this with this you know the Bernie Sanders type character, Jeremy Corbyn type character, mm -hmm. who are you know who maybe 10, 15 years ago you would have thought complete fringes, no way they're going to get anywhere. I mean, when I was in England and the UK and I lived uh, under Blair, the thought of someone like Jerry Corbyn um, being uh, the president, uh, the leader of the opposition was so far removed. Mm -hmm. What do you think this means throughout for world politics? So speaking about uh, Bernie Sanders first specifically, I think that, you know, in contrast to the very hateful message that's being expressed by the Republicans, we see a very hopeful message um, that's being expressed by him and it's, it's you know, both him himself verbalizing it, but also through the other parts of his campaign that you see. Um, you don't see it necessarily um, giving voice to Sikh people, but that's okay, because what you do see, you see a very open and welcoming environment to people from all backgrounds. And, 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 so, and that, of course, includes us. And, and so that's a, a very positive item. Um, certainly, there's a lot of folks here in Canada who, you know, speak about the, the campaign that's being run by Bernie Sanders. Um, as far as Mr. Corbyn goes, uh, I would say that almost no one speaks about him, uh, except for those who are from a UK extraction. Um, and I speak about this, you know, having attended the, the you know, the recent NDP convention in Edmonton. Uh, you know, Corbyn wasn't on anybody's lips, but certainly Bernie Sanders was. Um, what impact that this will have on the upcoming, um, you know, leadership race in Canada? What impact will American politics have on, on the upcoming leadership race? I don't think it will be overly significant, um, frankly, because the the political reality is very, very different. Um, you know, uh, both you know for our own community and also for the broader Canadian public. Um, it's important to realize that not just the nomination process in the United States, but indeed the presidential election will be done and finished um, before the NDP leadership race gets completed. And, and so what it means is that it, it will die out of the news cycle, you know, um, and, you know, we wish that all of our fellow citizens had a better memory <coughs> than that, but that's, you know, not the case. What I think would it'd be, you know, particularly challenging for, you know, the members of the SICOM who are down in the United States is to see actually the stark contrast generally that exists for the Sikh community between the political reality that we have going on here in Canada and the political reality that we have for them in the United States of America. Now, um, actually, while you you actually raise a very important point for the Sikh community in the States, because there is one governor 
in North Carolina, who, uh, who was of Sikh extraction anyway, and Nikki Haley. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I can't remember who she supported. I'm not sure if she supported Cruz or Donald Trump. I think she may have backed Marco Rubio, Marco Rubio but Ruth he's Boston. no longer in the race. Right. Yeah. And so, the, so and now coming to the other candidate in the um, on the Democratic side is, uh, of course, Hillary Clinton is a, is a well-known name. Um, what would you uh, the Clinton years? How was it for the Sikh community? Was I I used to be in the UK at that time. How did the Sikh community prosper uh, under um, under the, in the Clinton years and and what sort of relationships do they have, the Sikh community have with Clinton? Yeah, uh, again, you know, we, we don't, at least here in Canada, we don't, we don't see the profile, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think it was particularly bad or particularly good. Uh, if we were to, you know, take a march through time, starting, say, with the Reagan years back in the early 80s, through George Bush Sr., through to, you know, you know, Clinton, Bill Clinton, and then through the other presidents, I don't think that you have any one president that you would point to to say, hey, you know, uh, that man or woman, you know, they worked particularly well for us, right? Um, for, for that matter, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a president in recent history that really did some profound things for minority rights in general. I mean, certainly Obama, you look at him just by virtue of the fact that he got elected, mm -hmm. would be there. But, uh, like... I'm, I can't. I can't put my finger on any particular piece of legislation to say, "Hey, you know, this is th th this is a big step, and this is something that happened." I mean, the thing that we're waiting for, um, you know, for for immigrants generally in the United States is for all those who are in the country without papers mm -hmm. to be recognized and allowed to stay, particularly if their children and whatnot have been born there. Uh, that's that's the next big step forward, you know, in terms of you know what can be done for the broader group of minorities. In terms of world politics, and um, what difference would it make a Trump, a Trump president, a Sanders president, Clinton, or Ted Cruz? Yeah, uh, yeah, Ted Cruz or Donald Trump. Uh, sadly, you know, it would isolationist. Would you say? Yeah, well, I mean, you you, you, you say that. I mean, for first first, I mean, I think it would be isolationist with respect to Ted Cruz, certainly which is not what we need. You know, we, we need, we need a, an America that, that is, you know, strong on human rights as they have been in the past uh, and, and that stands up for, stands up for folks, uh, you know. I might not agree with you on that one. But yeah, and, and you may not, and, 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 that, and that's fine, but <laughs> yeah. I think that they most certainly uh, have, have a role to play there. Um, whereas I think Donald Trump is entirely unpredictable and that's not what you want with the commander-in-chief of the world's largest armed forces. You, you, you don't want someone who's unpredictable at all. You want someone who has, you know, a very, you know, patient, evidence-based, intelligent, you know, outlook on the world who's able to judge things accordingly. A Clinton presidency, how would, would you, do you think it would be like the um, Bill Clinton presidency rerun again? Um, no, I don't think so at all, actually. I, I think that, uh, you know, I think that she has the potential to be much stronger on the policy end. Uh, should she choose to be. We're not seeing it right now in the primaries, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, her intellect, skill, and everything, you know, what she brings to the table is the full package. Uh, whether we get to see it or not is, is, is the big question. I mean, <clears throat> I have my preference to know that would be Bernie Sanders. I think he'd be good, not just for America, but throughout the world, but especially uh, taking it to a more equal society. And that, um, and that sort of fits in with Sikh philosophy. I, I, I would agree with that. I would argue that, you know, the platform that's being presented um, by Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, is very much in line with Sikhi thinking. And from that perspective, I think, you know, uh, it would do the United States very well. But also, I agree with you, it would do the world very well also. Like, uh, what we want to have, you know, is, is a place, you know, basically where no one suffers. And if for those people who are, you know, ready and willing to work, uh, you know, are able to make ends meet and, you know, have their children, you know, live a better life than they did. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would really like our viewers, um, especially those who, who get this program through the United States, because we want to be educated as well from this, from our Sikh community in, in the United States on what they feel and what they believe and, and what are their views on, on the U.S. elections. I mean, would they support Sanders, Clinton, Cruz or, or, um, or Trump? And, and why would they do that? And how do they see themselves fitting in? Um, they're a minority of a minority. Um, the other community's growing, but there's, they, and, and I think it's quite a diverse community as well with many professionals 
um, and also those who are more recent immigrants as well, working, uh, you know, uh, trying to establish themselves. So, um, and it's a long-standing community. Yet the profile of the community is not that great, from my understanding, um, because um, they're associated. Most Americans do not can't recognize a Sikh from a Muslim, even though they've been here a hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and that, that obviously is a concern. So so we would really like, love to hear from our viewers um, on where the, they see themselves and see the election and, and, and what it means for us abroad as well as for themselves. Well, and, and let's, let's just you know jump into it and delve into it a bit deeper. I mean, we're talking about the national elections that exist in the United States. But of course, when we talk about the United States, which is very different than in the UK, um, and and somewhat different than in Canada, they you know they have a very different type of politics that exists at the state level. I mean, it's let's, let's not not overlook the fact that some states in the United States still have the death penalty, whereas mm -hmm. other ones don't. Right? I mean, we talk about here in Canada about how there are different provincial rules, and in fact, we've talked on this very show about you know how that impacts see people you know very directly with the ability to wear a bug, you know, when you're driving a motorcycle in BC, whereas you can't do it here on Ontario. The differences in the United States of America are even more stark, right? Because it's a life and death question depending on which state it, uh, you, you reside in. And, but again, when we talk about that, out of all the, you know, states in the United States of America, I can't think of one governor who's a Sikh. Um, and indeed, I can't think of any who are of South Asian extraction except for Bobby Jindal down in Louisiana. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's more scary than Trump, I think. Well, he, 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 he's different. He's trying very hard to, uh, to you know, assimilate. assimilate himself into the, the, the Tea Party faction of the Republican Party. Um, perhaps it suits him well at the state level in, in politics. Um, I'm not so sure that it serves, you know, the, the communities very well at large. Yeah, and, uh, and um, obviously he's, he's actually, his he's parentage is from, uh, from Punjab. Yeah, Amritsar, I, I believe, and, mm -hmm. and it is very interesting what his politics and, and all sorts of um, you know things like uh, photoshopping his face and, and all these sort of assimilation tactics. Well, well, well. Let, let, I mean, let, let we we talk about him, and, and you also mentioned earlier, you Nikki know, Haley. yeah, and, and again, you know, um, got to their positions, you know, as a result of you know, you know, either because they chose to or because they felt they they needed to converting to the Christian faith, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and so that it, it begs the question, you know, can a sick person in the United States of America, you know, in the same way that Bernie Sanders is wearing his socialism, you know, on his sleeve and make it work, can a sick person wearing their sickism on their sleeve, you know, be successful in politics and be able to carry it to the highest level? And, and there's no doubt about it, Canada is way ahead of the field on that. Um, you know, with all the elections of all, all Sikh politicians, all stripes, and in, not in like we said in our last show, mm -hmm. um, not just necessarily in the Sikh areas either. Um, which, um, so it'd be very interesting for the Sikh community to see if we can catch up. And even the UK, come to think of it, though we had Sikh parliamentarians, we've still not had a Sikh, uh, the star wearing par uh, parliamentarian. So that, that's something for, for our viewers. Um, in the UK to, uh, you know, ponder over as well. Yeah, well, why, I mean, and, and, and this is me now asking you for your expertise, but why do you feel that that's the case? I've never been able to work it out. I, I, I lived here and lived there as well. I, I, <coughs> they've done very well at the mayor level, council level. There's many Sikh councillors, many Sikh mayors, but at the, and many of the star wearing Sikh mayors as well. Uh, um, you know, I can think of my local town Hounslow. There used to be the star wearing when I was there. Anyway, uh, the star wearing uh, uh, Sikh mayor. But in terms of the parliamentary level, I'm I'm really not so sure why they're not being successful in electing a Sikh, uh, the star wearing member. I know many have run um, uh, for MP, um, but none, none have been successful. Uh, so that's something that the, that the Sikh community. And the UK needs to um, catch up on, from from. Uh, but but you know one of the reasons here is, for example, the the election that you ran in. Mm -hmm. All three were Sikh. You know, all three parties had a Sikh nominee. Mm -hmm. um, in in the UK, it's never been like that. The Sikh concentration now, uh, maybe it's population as well to a certain extent. Was the likelihood of election is either West Midlands, or West London, possibly mm -hmm. East London, mm -hmm. and the Sikh. Uh, see concentration is, I think, in those areas diluting because they're moving to different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, also too, let's not make the assumption that Sikh people only vote for Sikhs. That's true. 
right? Because you know, they were the, the, party. yeah, well, yeah, the, the community is by no means a monolith, right? Mm -hmm. And and so uh, you know, there there could be distinctions in that regard as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think on this very point, uh, and actually very, very note of um, why the, the UK Sikhs have not been able to elect the star wearing M M MP. Mm -hmm. um, or as the star wearing uh, BBMP, uh, yeah. BBA Sikh uh, MP. Mm -hmm. um, I would really love to hear from our viewers. For uh, sure. And, and maybe we can pick that up at some point. Uh, as next time, as, uh, as what is the roadmap from here to across the border of getting Sikhs elected into Parliament? On that very note, I think we have to end our program here. We're out of time. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank our viewers for joining us once again. And I'd like to thank our, our, our viewers for joining us this week. And on that very note, we have to end our program here. Till next time. Wahiji Kakalsa, Wahiji Kakalsa.